Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. It's a system of God's mercy to help you receive results while you learn. Because if God waits for the result to reflect your current knowledge, you may never grow. So he gives you an opportunity to tap into possibilities that are higher than your level of transformation. So that while you are enjoying the result, you can take time to grow. Because he knows that growth takes time. So just because you are receiving results by partnering with a grace, it is not a license to remain spiritually down. You have to rise so that one day it is your own grace and walk with God that will help another believer. Imagine if Jacob stopped at the God of Isaac and the God of Abraham. Today we'll be robbed of a dimension that his knowledge of God has provided for us. Are we together? Spiritual knowledge that we are a peculiar people because of this the one pursuit that you must make and i'll talk a little about that shortly this year is to cry for light light illumination light light open up my eyes light my lamp god is not a herbalist He's a miracle worker, but he's not a herbalist. He will require partnership from you through understanding for you to get any results. Whatever it is that God has done in and through this ministry that is worth giving him glory for came by partnership through understanding. Faith cannot be faith until it is sponsored by understanding. The foundation of faith is understanding. You have to know the systems that are allocated for the results that you desire. Then when you are convicted about it, then you act in accordance to what has been told you. And then you will receive results. Very, very important. Luke chapter 19 from verse 41. One of the two reasons why Jesus wept Jesus did not just weep in the grave of Lazarus alone, but Jesus wept. And when he was come near, he beheld the city. Now he sees beholding a city and did what? Wept over it. Now, if Jesus is crying over something, you need to find out what he's crying about. Next verse. Saying, this is why he's weeping. If thou hast known, even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto your peace. This is why Jesus is crying. He says, but now they are hid from your eyes. Imagine Jesus looking at you and crying and saying, I wish you knew this. I wish you knew this. I wish you knew this. Have you, I don't know if this has happened to you, that you misplaced something or maybe you are looking for your handkerchief and it's on your shoulder and you are going from room to room in anger and waiting to see someone with it so that you will injure the person. Suddenly you will find out that it was that person was you. The 
the things that pertain unto your peace the things that pertain unto your peace so there are things that pertain unto peace there is a science to your peace there are equations that make for your peace your peace there talks of your prosperity your greatness your health your longevity your well-being the things not the thing the things is a body of knowledge that pertain unto your peace he says but now they are hid from you there is what you can know and your church will never remain small it doesn't matter the darkness in the land it is your knowledge there is what you know that you will never beg forever till jesus comes it is true sponsored by knowledge there is what you will know that will command favor and the help of men to your life forever there is what you know that it doesn't matter the negative things that happen to you there is a system to turn it around for your good Jesus wept over that city let me show you a scripture Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 2 Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 2. Please read it with me. The people that walked in darkness have seen a, not just a light. And then it says, they that dwell in the land of the, sh how can a man dwell here? Is that an, a habitable place? He said, but there are people that dwell in the land of the shadow of death. Upon them, what happened? The light shined. Notice that the solution to this category of people is light. Those who walked in darkness, a version says they that sat in darkness. Sat in darkness. Sitting is a state of rest. That means you are not even aware that it is darkness until the light comes. He says, they have seen a great light. And then he says that those that have dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, upon them, light has shined. That means every time there is darkness in your life and you cry, God answers you. The official way of answering prayer is sending light. That's how God sends light. His anointing is in his light. If you reject his light, you will never, never access the power that helps people. Please understand what I'm teaching. Apostle, why are things going on like this in my life? The answer will be light. There is a dimension of God's light. Why will my finances not rise? There is a dimension of light why am i not excelling in life and ministry there is a dimension of light so when god wants to help a man let me show you how he helps a man his light comes come my dear and he brings you out he brings you out watch this he's bringing you out of darkness the coming of his light is your deliverance no matter what happens to you if light has not come you are not free if you like go out once there is no light you are not free spiritual illumination as God's system of deliverance he said I am the light of the world then later on he says "Ye are the light of the world that means we help the world not just by building structures but by introducing an understanding listen the assignment of believers is not just to build physical structures remember the kingdom is a spiritual kingdom the first you help men not just by doing physical things please listen to me if i give this guy one thousand naira money is physical and anything physical is finite you help this brother by introducing light are we together now when the light of god comes it is able to translate this gentleman and activate possibility in it, possibilities in his life so you knew him to be someone who is standing here remember years ago this gentleman was holding his admission letter and today he's a doctor authorized to be able to handle whatever situation within the level of his knowledge light there are some dimensions that even as a doctor he cannot handle now if another kind of light comes it will move him forward 
we move forward by light we move forward my brothers and my sisters by light we increase by light so when satan wants to destroy you what do you think is the easiest way to destroy you to find a way to do something to the light or to do something to you the easier one is to do something to you so that you can make the word of god of non effect are we together now this is what has happened to so many people there are people who will hear the things i'm saying now and think that oh this is it really important but look at the situations in their life do you know let me tell you my brothers and my sisters in as much as we continue to pray here at the miracle service and i will keep doing it all my life and with all my heart but let me tell you the sustainable way of victory is to command your result by knowledge when you obtain a result that was not sponsored by knowledge you will fear the result because you know it will not last are we together now yes so this gentleman is here at the mercy of light this dear lady is here at the mercy of light my brother is here at the mercy of light oh god change my life and god says then open up your heart to light and if satan wants to confuse you and sees that you have made up your mind to get light he can bring not the light you need he will allow light come but it's not the light that will solve your problem so you can get a book and be reading and learning mm, wow you are nodding your head but you still remain there and you find out that the light you are receiving now is not needed for the situation illumination they that walked in darkness have seen a great light a great light let's look at a parable that jesus gave uh, and then we'll come back here jesus gave a very interesting parable luke chapter 15 please luke chapter 15 from verse 8 to 10. notice if you read the entire luke chapter um, 15 it 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 reveals the kingdom as something that was missing and found missing and found three parables were in that luke chapter 15 including that of the prodigal son so the and it it now gives the kingdom a similitude of something that was lost and then found something that was lost and then found this is one of the parables it says either what woman having 10 pieces of silver and if she lose one dot not what look at how the woman is approaching a problem now once upon a time she had 10 pieces of silver and then one got missing it's a representation of a dimension and look at how the woman recovers she does not just go around carelessly she knows it is somewhere but she needs to be specific she lights a candle and then she will use the light of the candle to do what to start sweeping the house and seek diligently by light till she finds it and seek diligently sweeping is not alone it's not enough you must seek diligently passionately lord there has to be a way you open scripture and you are crying out your heart and then light comes there's one thing i know about light when your light comes you must arise it is true it is true if you remain in a position the solution is not the strength of satan my brothers and my sisters the solution is light or enough light she has 10 pieces of silver she loses one and what happens she lights a candle neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel this woman is going around i must find the coin i thought she has nine more the same way if she doesn't master how to find coins the ninth one will lose the eighth one are you seeing the deception i like this woman whoever she is is a wise woman you don't wait till you have two coins left before you will not have the motivation to find it the moment one was missing she said i won't give life a chance whatever made the first one fall will make the second one fall until i master how to find it now the woman found what was missing 
let me tell you how satan deceives us one area of your life may not be doing well and many areas are doing well and you say it doesn't matter you won't give it the diligence then another area is not doing well it doesn't matter i won't give it diligence then another area is not doing well it doesn't matter are you seeing usually the areas you are focusing on satan will not touch it first he will touch the areas you will run to when he touches that one when he's done then eventually something happens and you turn and find out that eight or nine areas are gone but there are people when one thing is not going on well your bible lord there has to be light there must be a way there must be a way revelations don't just come when you pray revelation comes when you stay you stay prayer alone does not bring you see there are many people let me tell you this any successful person will tell you there is a place of diligence and there is the labor dimension of god's word i wish that anything you are looking for you will just find overnight no there are times that your time will be years will be months will be many years but no matter how long it is stay because when you find it the world will know you have found it it is costly to assume you have found it be sure early that you have found it because you may assume you have found it until life needs it and you cannot bring it out you have not found it they are life to those who find them and health to their flesh are we together now this is a very powerful scripture and I want you to learn that when people are sitting in darkness, the solution, the solution, you know, I travel quite extensively to go and minister. Many times when I get to a place with, within the level of the grace that God has given me, I can know what the problem is within minutes. I know. You can look at a man and know what his problem is. And know what the solution is and if that person is not willing to take the solution then your heart breaks there are people today who come for counseling some of you join the queue for counseling you are standing for counseling and you are trying to tell me what is wrong apostle abc and like a doctor i already know this is a problem and usually i can tell them okay get one two three koinonia messages and listen to and i just touch their head and you see the anger the annoyance sometimes you know they are expecting to touch me i didn't fall i didn't do anything i will tell the person get this and that message usually they will start moving as if they are going there and just turn and walk away now please don't feel bad you have tied your hands by yourself the system works with light the system works with light the system works with light nobody wins by mistake the system works with light so if you really want to be victorious your assignment is to be a student of light and this is what we are going to be doing the seven days is not just a time to pray and fast blindly is this not the kind of fast i have commanded it says then shall your light break forth shall your light break forth my brothers and my sisters we arise by light i look at my life today and i look at many things i did not know and sometimes tears just come out from my eyes imagine that i knew it and i wonder how many other things i do not know what do you know about life what do you know about men what do you know about demons what do you know about god what do you know about time what do you know about wealth what do you know about greatness what do you know about failure what do you know about darkness what do you know about light what do you know about defeat what do you know about victory what do you know about jesus what do you know about satan That's where the victory lies.
So a believer can be mentored to become victorious, not to become a church member. Meaning I can pick these three people right now and say, look, come and I will teach you the ways of God. Micah chapter 4, Zechariah chapter 4, that's the assignment. That the mountain of the Lord's house, give us Micah chapter 4 please. That it shall come to pass in the last days. Listen to the assignment of the church. The last days. That the mountain of the Lord's house. Micah chapter 4. Shall be established in the top of the mountains. And it shall be exalted above the hills. And people shall do what? Flow to it. Next verse. It says, and many nations. How many nations? Many shall come and say come let us go up to the mountain of the lord to the house of the god of jacob and he will teach us his ways they are there in search of light isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 it says arise shine for your light has come arise shine because you now know arise shine because you are no longer in ignorance arise shine because the power and the fear that comes with ignorance is broken amplified says arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you rise to a new light arise from the depression the prostration which circumstances have kept you they kept you through darkness they didn't press you physically they did something to your spiritual understanding and kept you there 80 percent of jesus's ministry was teaching notice how he made apostles he did not just make apostles there were times early in the morning they would go to pray but for three days all of you come up the mountain and he will continue to teach he didn't finish the curriculum when he resurrected he would have said everybody this is jesus back to life he says students quickly let's go we have my time i need to sit with you we have 40 more days to round up the course and for 40 days he kept teaching them teaching them on the matters of the kingdom when he was done he said tarry just 10 days you are good to go till today he has not seen a need to come back and say i failed when you give men light you really empower them when you give people money you give them donation when you give people clothes you give them charity but when you give them light you have really helped them giving is not only giving money money is not the only thing to be given the most useful thing to be given and that's how you know whether you'll be great or not if the things you like getting are physical you will not go far you must get the things that bring the physical things light show me someone who is in complete ignorance but will sit down and cry to the god of heaven and say lord i confess my ignorance show me show me open my eyes he said open down my eyes that i may behold that means that this kind of seeing god must open your eyes education cannot give you this kind of light it can prepare your mind to receive but only when god takes off the veil you won't know there is a veil till he takes it off and then you say my god this is it this is it i found my way I found my way as haphazard as life is the knowledge of the ways of God you begin to connect the dots and see that I thought it was haphazard but there is a rhythm that synergizes life ask any great man ask anybody who God is using mightily they will be lying if they don't if they tell you they don't know what they are doing it's not true it's not true my passion let me tell you my passion is to continue to dispense this light just letting you know that light will lift you is not enough i must bring the specific light what is the light this is your book what is responsible for bringing this book back to your hands number one is it possible yes you see that but what is the system design remember 
this is the book he's looking for but he doesn't know how to pick this book between you and this book there is a mystery there is a light that must connect you you can stand and see the book forever and not get it and sometimes you don't just need to listen to God alone you need to listen to the person who has picked his own how dare you trivialize the person that picked his own oh god you are my god and i will ever praise you oh god you are my god and i will ever praise you oh god you are my God, and I will ever praise you. I will seek you in the morning. I will learn to walk in your ways and step by step. tell you what is happening to you in koinonia keys are given to you get me a bunch of keys if you can find any you will get to a point my brothers and my sisters listen you will get to a point in your life and your destiny when you will know that life is many rooms and all those rooms need keys look at this this is a bunch of keys this is what god is giving you You've gotten three already, but he said that you need to open 70 rooms to succeed. So you now have three. You need to catch up. But you keep dangling three and say, I have three. And he says, those three rooms are just toilets. I need to give you keys. Listen, these are the ones that will reign in life. They who have paid the price. Lord, my child can be a bad boy. So let me know in advance, what is the key to restore a defaulting child? It may be too late. You don't get the key when you have the child. You get the key before you have the child. I don't pray that any arm robber will steal your car. But what if he steals the car? What is the key? So God continues, look at what you are doing. He gives you a candle and he says keep sweeping and you are sweeping from one meeting to the other you are sweeping sometimes you say god i'm tired i've been sweeping for 10 years and i've just found four keys god will say a time will come you will find a bunch in one place you will not always pick one by one there are times when you, you will see many keys in one place let me tell you i submit to you this is what i've spent my life doing I'm like a spiritual archaeologist. Show me the keys. What are the keys to the anointing? I know I need this for ministry. I need this for life. And he says, hold the light and keep sweeping. You sweep from Genesis to Revelation, you start again. 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 You don't sweep once. Listen. So while you are sweeping, you will find a key. Sometimes you will not know that what you are looking at is a key till you come back to sweep again. All the keys don't look the same. Listen, listen to me. Please listen to what I'm teaching you. It is not, it is not every key that appears as a key. You will look at some keys and they don't look like it. And the Spirit of God will say, pick it. When you see the kind of door that this key will open, you will know. Let me tell you how you prepare for life. You hold your keys. And then when you begin to walk, you will see people who went ahead of you standing before certain doors. You, you thought they went ahead, but there they are marking time. 
they only open two doors out of 50 and they are standing and God says now remember the key I gave you in 95 bring it out open this door remember the key I gave you in 2001 during your retreat I gave you a small key now this is the small door that the key opens for step by step you lead me and I will all of my days for step been given unto you to know to know the keys of the kingdom this is what we do business with in this kingdom the keys our fathers who are gone ahead of us are called fathers because of this when you check them some of them the keys they have they can't hold it again they have looked for bags and when they see you sometimes they look at you and say i know this door i saw it before when i was 27 i saw the door let me tell you how the key looks like so when you read their books and listen to them that's what you are doing they are helping to show you the key let me tell you how satan cheats you sometimes he makes you think the keys you hold are not keys and you throw them and the thing is when you throw them if you are starting with god you will go back you have to remember where you threw them and start sweeping again koinonia hear me you may not have the car yet but you have the key you may not have the house yet but you have the key man of god hear me you have not started the church yet but these are your members hidden in the keys that you hold Listen, this is a very ancient secret that God taught me. Stay, stay on my word. Don't just be educated in terms of knowledge that pops up. Learn it. I remember when I found the law of encounter. Wow, this is the law that controls the power of God. I remember when I found the law of honor. It blew my mind. The master key. There are, I will, ah, why did I go ahead of myself? Because I will show you that there are master keys. When you don't find some keys, you can use some keys to find the ones you are missing. Yes, sir. They are called master keys. Master keys. Master keys. You find these keys. And sometimes, the door that will open is the door that your child's life depends on it's not every door that relates to you directly some doors are the keys that will feed your family some doors are the keys that will preserve you this is what god gave joseph he said joseph take this let me tell you this look at me those of us waiting for god to just bring physical things to bless you i like you to be matured and think like a believer Thank God for miracle a lot. But if that's all you are waiting for, you are not thinking well. This is it. I commend you. I look, he's, he's teaching you. He's saying, look, stop wasting your time. I hand you over to God and to the word of his grace. Number one, it is able to build you so that you are stable, immovable, unshakable. Then number two, you will find keys here and you will pick them up. You will get to some of these doors and find people who were standing there before you were born. They are still there. Standing at those doors and knocking and knocking. And here you come from nowhere. That's how you show forth his praises. Because many of them will be saying this door cannot open. We've been at this door from 1951. And here comes O warm Jacob, empowered by light. And you turn it. It may be an old door, but you swing it open. A time will come when they notice that you have mastered the art of opening doors. Then Gentiles will come to your light. You will no longer look for them. Listen. 
this is the cure for complex this is the cure for complex no amount of good clothes good hair good anything can give you what this will give you the real secret of confidence is the holy spirit living in you and the dexterity of the spiritual knowledge that you hold they may persecute you but let's get to a door keep talking while we get to a door keep bragging while we get to a door keep making noise while we get to keep mocking god let us just get to a door every mockery ends when you stand before a door because only a key opens that door some of you are giving diligence to what you are doing now and you may not know what you are doing listen to me my brothers and my sisters people may laugh at you and mock at you you've been in koinonia for five years you have nothing to show no job no husband no money no no ministry no business no nothing and sometimes you feel guilty you have the keys you have just not reached the door and so you continue moving and then one day when you open that door when god is ready to announce you he can fast track 10 years of your life by keeping you on stage and you say son turn the key that opens the door to the anointing and on that day those who knew you will say from whence did this come and you say i found a key god gave me a key from that one meeting you may never rest again with the open doors that come open doors are only open because of the keys that open them they that walked in darkness it says arise from the depression lack of light can bring real depression not just medical depression a state where nothing works in a man's life but many of us ignore the keys and we're chasing shadows if only my uncle gave me five thousand I will never beg again if only um i wear a nice cloth they will think if only i do this and that and god says look 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 you may be in that one room but carry keys keys koinonia this is what god is going to be doing these seven days keys some of you threw some keys you had and god is going to be bringing you restoration more than restoration of a property or restoration of a this and that this is the real restoration the keys of the kingdom let me tell you fear a man who has held this there is no power there is no enchantment there is no devil that will throw such a one you keep watching that man your eyes will only keep going higher because of the power of this There are families that do not have even one key. They are not born again. Listen to me. From traditional worship, this is where they stand. Father does not have a key. Mother does not have a key. Sister does not have a key. There are some of you, you want to get into ministry, no key. I'm called. I'm anointed. They poured oil on my head, but were keys given to you. You just get up and your first assignment requires 10 keys. And you stand there stupefied with no keys. You are not ready for life when you do not have keys. No matter how you think you are ready. Listen, while we prepare to start tomorrow, you are going to have to cry. Which key don't I have? Be honest and be sincere. Tonight's meeting is a charge. Have I found the key to the grace of God? Have I found the key to the favor of God? Have I found the key? Hallelujah. You can hear like, like Imam was sharing. There was a key that he found. So when trouble came, they would have killed that person for nothing. And he engaged that key don't wait until they give you a report before you start checking and then you say ah i don't have the key is someone challenged tonight brothers 
learn this key life is harsh let me tell you sincerely i don't mean to discourage you what this is to life is the keys that you hold what betides a man that steps into life not holding any key and i will give you the keys of the kingdom i search for these keys and i continue to search for them and when you find them they are life to those who find them they are life to those who find them you need diligence you need diligence my brothers and my sisters who are going to pray you need diligence the keys are not just at plain sight sometimes you may need to search and search and search and search and search and lie down there there are times that the holy spirit will have to be the one to come and say look turn your eyes look there that's the key some of these keys cannot be found by the eyes of men it will take the holy spirit to open your eyes for this cause i bow my knees ephesians chapter 1 please give it to us and verse 17 he's praying for the church ephesians chapter 1 that the god of our lord jesus christ paul is praying the father of glory may give unto you what the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him 18 the eyes of your understanding being enlightened some versions say being flooded with light that you may know that you may know that you may know that's the key that you may know because what you do not know will keep you where you are forever you would think that life will just move you forward automatically you will never move forward automatically not in ministry not in career whatever it is even if there are attacks there is what you will need to know for your victory victory will not just come if it would just come like that some of our loved ones would have been free step by step you are leading me and I will follow you all of my days. Step by step, you lead me. And I will follow you. As I travel for meetings and I see the wonder working power of spiritual knowledge and the anointing of the holy spirit i am grateful to god but sometimes i ask the question what if i didn't have the key do you know someone will die if you don't get this key and that someone may be you it may not always be someone around you arise shine arise shine give god glory john chapter 1 and verse 6 the bible says there was a man sent from god his name was john it says the same came for a witness verse 7 that he came to bear witness to the truth are we together now and that all men might through his witness believe all men might through that witness believe there are people who will never believe in Jesus until they see your light. I've been preparing myself for these seven days. Lord, what do I not know? Thank God for what I know, but I need the one that I do not know. If you have 30 over 100, you got 30, but you failed. You didn't get zero, but you didn't get enough to pass. So ignore the 30 and focus on the 70 even if you have 80 over 100 you see in this kingdom it is what the 10 sometimes the one key you don't have can rubbish all the other keys that you have one key hezekiah was at the point of death chapter 38 of isaiah the word of the lord came to isaiah the son of amos go and tell hezekiah to put his house in order 
he will not recover from the sickness a real prophet and hezekiah said man of god i honor you i obey you you can go and he turned his face where you know what to do you can listen to people and say i've heard you may god bless you when you close the door you pick your keys where is it where is it where is it there is a name ah blind Bartimaeus. he had been trying many things but not the key people will pass and he say help me wicked people he didn't open the door one day he learned about the mercy of god and he said come now let that opportunity come as soon as jesus was passing jericho for the last time he no longer said help me he said thou son of david have mercy the moment jesus had that mercy he said, ah the cross the cross mercy because when you call mercy jesus must stand mercy. what should i do for you that i might see and that was it that man would have died there thou son of david do you know when to call him jesus and when to call him the son of david do you know what occasion necessitates thou son of david have mercy on me I want to walk in exact knowledge. I want to walk in knowledge, spiritual knowledge. Worthy, worthy is the lamb that was slain and he has redeemed them, us now, unto God. He says, I, I beheld and I saw a lamb that had been slain. Weep not, he said, for the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, is worthy, qualified to open the book and unlock the scroll it says and when i looked i saw a lamb that had been slain having seven horns and seven eyes seven eyes seven eyes the spirit of god providing for perfect revelation seven eyes seven eyes seven eyes apostle when will i rise the day the light to lift you comes will i rise in august if you want to will i rise this april if you want to will i rise in may if you want to the choice is yours your addiction to his light is what culminates to your rising please hear me as i preach to you time will never change anything it will take light the entrance of thy word give it light not just knowledge light and then understanding to the simple hallelujah something happened to me today that almost brought tears and i said god how many people may never 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 be able to experience certain dimensions of your hand simply because of this light that they do not know you know many times when i'm praying truly speaking i think in the last one month my prayer life now i don't even know what to say again many times i just kneel down and tears just come out of my eyes thank you thank you for knowledge thank you for knowledge thank you for knowledge thank you for taking away ignorance you for taking away ignorance separating me from darkness is the power of God is someone willing to pray tonight Lord I'm tired of where I am I don't want to lie to myself again I'm tired of this realm there is a dimension in God that he seeks to bring me this can't be it God is so much bigger than this. Oh, this can't be it. God is so much bigger than this. One more time. This can be for you. 
God is so much. Listen. Was it not ignorance that caused Cain? If Cain knew how to do it well, he would have gotten it. Cain did it, but he did it wrongly. God is no respecter of persons, but he will respect his ordinances forever. There is something we do not know. The Bible says the Lord is nigh them that call upon him. Until you have a broken and a contrite heart, say, Lord, I've seen this and I thank you. But open my eyes in this area. Is someone desperate to cry tonight? Open my eyes. 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 Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 4. Please give us an amplified. It's a popular scripture here. You know it. Let's start from verse 3. Habakkuk chapter 3 from verse 3 and 4. It says, God coming from Teman, you know, and the Holy One from Mount Paran. It says, and his glory covered the heavens and the earth was full of his praise. Verse 4 very powerful scripture it says and his brightness was like the sunlight rays streamed from his hand and there in that light was the hiding place of his power God's power is hidden in his light remember the teaching last week his divine power has given us all things but that divine power comes at the instance of the light so grace and peace is multiplied through knowledge the greater your knowledge the greater your exact spiritual illumination that is the depth and the dimension of power that you will command the bible says to be careful lest what you call light be darkness you can call darkness light for many years please open your mouth and cry and say lord damage darkness from my life drive it far from my life drive it far from my life Take away darkness from my life. Take away darkness, oh God, from my life. What are you turning to? Listen. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you.
It's time to rise. It's time to rise with a testimony that everyone will know that this is the finger of God. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. You know, there's more that's found in you. It's in you, Lord. I know there's more that's found in you. Yes. We 
Fasting is ushering into a new season because of the light that is coming and because of what you will do with it. Your heart must be prepared to receive it. Listen, just one spiritual law that is well understood can turn your life around. A law of God will turn your life around. of Zion. He said we were like them that dream. Listen, I'm speaking to you by the Spirit. I have seen what will happen in these days. He says when the Lord turn again, turn again, some of you are not just shifting, it's a complete turnaround. Complete turnaround. Complete turnaround. You will know the door that this mystery should open. You will know it. One door opens you up, another door opens you up, another door opens you up. Then you pray with understanding, not just careless prayer without light. It says, Turn again our captivity like the strings of the nether. Turn again our captivity. I agree that it will be a moment of sacrifice. I agree that we are going to be praying and fasting. But watch what happens to your eyes while you fast. Except scripture is not true. It says, then shall your light break forth. You have been looking, but now you will see that this is it. I've heard about it with the hearing of my ears, but now my eyes have seen it. Now my eyes will see it. Now my eyes will see. Now my eyes will see. And I will walk in it. It will no longer be miracle alert. One moment after another. But you enter into a dimension called the worldly place. It will no longer be one demonstration of the Holy Spirit. As told by death walk. But you enter into a realm of mastery. Mastery. God is damaging ignorance, transiting you from being general and putting you in a spectacular position that everyone that sees you will know that you are called by the name of God. It may not look like it, but my brothers and sisters, don't forget that this is God we are talking about. God is changing every in my life. Listen to me. I like you to cause the spirit of destruction. Destruction is a wicked spirit. You will listen to every other thing but the word that will lift you. He said he sends forth his word. The word is a messenger. It will be coming to people. A buffet of big mysteries in the kingdom. Lift 
to voice and cause destruction. Lord, I cause destruction. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A few minutes and we are done. Please, we are praying these prayers to prepare our spirits for tomorrow. There are a number of things in the Bible that can fight the world. One of it is called the traditions of men. It says you have made the world of none effect through the tradition. Tradition. You don't have the flexibility to adjust. This is always how I've been taught. This is how I know it. The Bible says you cannot put new wine in an old wine skin. Lord, do something to my wine skin that will give way so that a new wine skin will come. Lift your voice and pray. I'm tired of the old wine skin. I've exhausted the results that come with the old wine skin. Are you praying? New wine. New wine. New wine. In my wine skin. New wine. Number two, unbelief. They had the word just like it says, there remained a rest for the people of God. It says, in that day, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart like they did in the provocation in the wilderness. Unbelief. 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 You hear the word of God and all kinds of contemplations begin to come. Give us Romans chapter 4, please. Romans chapter 4. We are praying. We are preparing our hearts for tomorrow. Romans chapter 4. Let's study Father Abraham in one minute and learn from him the principles that make for true faith. Abraham. From verse 17 as it is written I have made thee a father of many nations you are going to be hearing things like this but the Bible says before whom he believed even God who quickened the dead and called those things which be not as though they were 18 18 who against hope some of you are going to have to believe and hope against hope because the things God will tell you to, to do or the things God will tell you will come back to life are already dead and have been long dead and yet God will tell you they will come back to life. He believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according as that which was spoken. Next verse 19. He says, and not being weak in faith, he considered not this is not a week to start considering. Okay, now that prophecy is coming, that this will happen, let me calculate. If only my uncle called me, no, that one is not faith. He considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Next verse. He staggered not. You believe now, and then as soon as you share the grace, you are just with someone and he says, oh boy, we only said amen, no. Even me, God knows I don't believe it. You are staggering. Vacillations of your convictions. You believe this today and by tomorrow you change. But was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Lord, I challenge unbelief as a spirit. Every word that is coming from you, I, 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 I obtain the faith to receive it. Lift your voice and those outside, please pray. Those online, pray. I receive the faith.
obstacle number three pride pride the bible says and receive with meekness the engrafted word there is a spiritual quality required to receive meekness pride can destroy pride can destroy you're going to pray and say lord my heart is open to learn i receive the heart of a student in this school of the spirit teach me i'm not too proud to learn teach me lift your voice and pray Let me tell you this. There are some of you, please give me this cup. There are some of you, this is what you plan to bring for the prayer and fasting. A small cup like this. Lord, I know you. You are like the man with one talent. You are a hard man. I know you. You are not a giver. You don't have the heart to lavishly give. So I brought a small cup to receive. He will fill the cup. There are other people who will bring a drum and say, Lord, I know you can feel it. There are other people who will buy a host and hang it and say, Lord, I'm plugging it from you to me. Not even a drum. Like plugging it to God and plugging it to myself and let everything that can flow, flow. Even in the good soil, it gave three kinds of results. 30 fold, 60 fold, 100 fold. It is not the sower. It is the heart that the seed fell on. Lord, it must be 100 fold this time around. It must be 100 fold. I will not be blessed on day 3, day 5 and day 6. I will be blessed from day 1 to the last day. Last prayer point. Lord, as I'm standing in this conference, every one of my family members, I connect through the power of the bloodline. They must be part of this testimony. Listen, listen. If you are blessed alone, you are still not free. You have to pray that they too may be saved. That God will also bring them. He says, for the promise is unto you and your children and your children's children as many as are far off even they that the lord will call the promise is for everybody not for a few people so you are going to pray if you can mention your loved ones by name i'd like you to mention them and say lord they must be part of this conference in the spirit as i'm standing i also agree for a visitation for them i agree for a visitation for them Call them by name. Those who are not born again, this is the week that they must encounter Jesus Christ. Those who are wallowing in ignorance, sincere but ignorant, this is the season, oh God. 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 Are you praying? This is the season. Lift your voice from the depth of your heart and pray. Shabbat Shalom. 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 Shalom.
Hallelujah. The last scripture for tonight, Genesis 21, verse 1 and 2. May this be someone's testimony. Genesis 21, from verse 1 and 2. Let's read it together. One to read. And the Lord visited Sarah as had said and the Lord did to Sarah as he has spoken next verse for Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age at when the set time which the Lord had spoken there is a set time that's the key word it's not just that the answer came but that the answer came at the set time he said, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time. This is the last prayer. Lord, I declare that this is my set time. Do to me like you have spoken. Do to me like you have spoken. I declare that this is my set time. Do to me like you have spoken. Do to me like you have spoken. This is my set time. This is my set time. For those of you who travel from far, I'd like you to pray from the depth of your heart. Those following your life, Lord, this is my set time. Do to me like you have said. Do to me like you showed me in the vision. Do to me like you spoke through your servant. Father, in the name that is above all names, we decree and we declare that these seven days will be seven days of fire. Will be seven days of true revival. Will be seven days of a strange dispensing of the mysteries of the kingdom. We call them seven days of strange wonders. We call them seven days of divine visitation. Seven days of supernatural shifts. Seven days of encounters. Let me tell you sincerely, the kind of encounters that many of you will have these seven days will be what you have just had people say they used to have. I have prayed this and I have agreed with God for strange angelic visitations. All kinds of prophetic visitations. And the angel came to Daniel and Gabriel came to Mary. The ministry of angels in this conference that God is opening you up, taking you to realms and dimensions by the Spirit. Hallelujah. We bless you. Lord, we decree and declare, let no flesh be glorified throughout this prayer time. We agree for those who are coming still on their way. And Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that you will honor yourself, you will honor your name even in this prayer retreat. We commit every session to your hand. And Lord, we pray that it will be profitable in the name of Jesus. We obtain the grace to fast. We obtain the grace to pray in the name of Jesus. We also obtain the grace to receive. We receive the grace for open eyes. We receive the grace for open ears. Amen. We receive the grace for an enlightened heart. Amen. We receive the grace for performance. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen and amen. Give Jesus praise. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to make the altar call. Up front, there are people here who need Jesus. 
and need Jesus fast. Fast. There are people who are saying, Apostle, all the while, while you were preaching, I, I was just seeing the need for Jesus in my life. I don't want to start this conference without Jesus. I want to maximize every moment. You are here, the main auditorium, the overflows, even online. I want to give you an opportunity. The Bible says, ye must, not may, not if you wish, you must be born again. Born again properly. You cannot start a, a retreat and a revival careless. Your eyes are blind. Your spirit is dead. You need that, that strong opening. And that only comes by salvation. And what a joy. This is Easter Friday. To commemorate and to bring souls tonight like a trophy to his majesty and say, Lord, we present to you this even on this day. There are people here. You want to maximize this Easter period and you're saying, Apostle, I want to truly, truly come to Jesus or I want to rededicate my life to Jesus. Wherever you are, overflow one, overflow two, overflow three, by the roadside, please make your way. Our space here is slim, but I'd like you to summon the courage to rise and make your way very quickly. There has to be someone. Don't be afraid. Be the first person to summon the courage to come. I believe that somebody is making this decision. God bless you if you are coming. God bless you if you are coming. Don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. Please encourage and motivate them as they come. You're bringing joy to the heart of the Father even on this day. The devil is a liar. Don't let him keep you down. They will see you and they will laugh at you. That's the voice of the devil. Apostle, I think I'm born again. I'm not exactly sure. Join them. Join them very quickly. If you are not sure you are born again, it's a sign to join them. Will the Lord love me with everything I've done? Yes, sir. Join them. Join them. Those coming from outside, please clear the way for them. Clear the way for them to come. Apostle, I think I'm too old. That's the voice of the devil. I think I'm too young. That's still the voice of the devil. Make your way quickly. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I still believe that there are a few people that God is speaking to that need to come. You are just, you don't even know what your life is about right now. And you are saying, I, I just need my life back in order. Please make your way. Join them. I'm sensing it in my spirit that God is also calling this group of people. Please, quickly, quickly. If you are coming from outside, join them very quickly. Join them very quickly. Young, old, together, join them quickly. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You see, the thing about getting saved is whether or not you truly make that decision, it is up to you. But you can only and will only be encouraged to come to Jesus. Jesus is not a liability to your life. He's not a nuisance to civilization. He said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No man, no man, whosoever cometh to the Father except through me. Praise the Lord. Now, for those of you who are in front, I sincerely salute you for making this decision. I want you to lift your right hand high above your head, sincerely, and I want you to repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus. Join them quickly, my dear. I believe in you that you are the Son of God. Tonight, I have heard your word. And I make Jesus Lord of my life. I declare that your life becomes my life. And my life becomes your life. I receive the abundance of grace. And the gift of righteousness. And I declare that from tonight until forever. I am a child of God. I belong to Jesus. Keep your hands lifted. 
Jesus, we thank you and we honor your sacrifice even in this season by presenting to you these souls. They have come sincerely like trophies. We lift them to you in honor of the eternal sacrifice of the Lamb. We pray that as always you will receive these ones. That their confession will truly grant them access to be partakers of your divine nature. I declare that the power of Satan, the power of sin, the power of the flesh is broken over your life now and forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. We declare that you are born again, you are sons of the kingdom. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. A big congratulations to all of you. Um, may I please request that you follow the gentleman. There's a gentleman waving his hands. All of you in concert this way. Just follow him and... Um, there will be a group of people to receive you very quickly. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.